Greetings, welcome to Learn to Burn Studios. In today's video, we're gonna talk about what is ceramic shell? You know, why do we want to use it? Not only kind of the ins and outs of, of how we're gonna do it, and we'll get to that in, in a later video, but first I want to talk about what is ceramic shell and why do we want to use it? Well, how is it going to benefit our foundry practice? Why is it going to give us better castings? The reason why I like using ceramic shell is a couple of key reasons. One, it's lightweight. You know, if we're say casting a football and you know, we, we, we're doing that in, in traditional standard investment or sand casting, our mold's going to be roughly about hundred pounds of solid weight because the mold needs to be fairly thick around that around that shape it, it's cumbersome as opposed to the ceramic shell where we'd be creating you know walls of you know a quarter inch thick and so the, the the patterns and the shells wind up being much more manageable and a lot easier on the back blew out my back a long time ago uh li doing you know, lifting heavy things and in, in you know in a stupid way um and when i was younger and whatnot and so if i don't need to be picking up a heavy mold I'm going to avoid that situation. So ceramic shell, one reason is that it works out to be more manageable and, and better on my body in the long run. Second, along with it being lightweight and stuff like that, it provides an, an amazing amount of detail. Anything that's in the wax will be in the, in the metal, um, including uh, fingerprints. And even to the point of like, we think of fingerprints being super subtle, but that's almost could be considered a coarse texture. Um, compared to you know the, the amount of sensitivity that the shell has in picking up all the little nuances and details in your wax pattern and translating that into the metal. I guess a third reason why I really like ceramic shell is that uh, the quality of the castings or the really the ability to be able to cast uh, thinner. Because the shells are, are thin and we're pouring them hot, it allows us to, you know, we, I can pour metal down to about an eighth inch thick. I mean, certainly with bronze, I've even gotten away with casting it down to about a sixteenth of an inch fairly consistently and being able to create light, lighter weight castings so you could, you know, they can be a little bit more versatile. Some of that reasoning is that the, if we're pouring into a sand mold, the sand molds are cold. And so we have actually have to make them thicker. So as the metal's passing through that cooler space and losing its heat to the investment or to the sand, it still has enough heat to actually be able to, the ability to stay liquid and actually pass through the entirety of your pattern and, and get a complete fill. Standard investment is, is poured warm or hot as well, um, but the materials are typically thicker. And again, you, you lose a certain amount of heat dissipation um, into that material. So even with standard investment, your, your, your molds might only be three or 400 degrees, whereas the ceramic shell, if you wanna go like say super thin, you know, I can you know pour those shells at like 1600 degrees, 2000 degrees. So there's literally no heat loss as the metal is passing through those patterns and I can get like just crazy thin, thin details. Fourth reason why we really like using ceramic shell is that it's gas permeable. And what I mean by that is that it's, it's, it's weird. Even though it has the, the density to pick up every detail in the wax, fingerprints and whatnot, it also has enough porosity in the shell that gases can push right through. And what this means for us is that we can get away with less gates and less events. You know, every time we attach a, a gate or a vent to, a, um, to our pattern, one, it takes time to do that, but then it also takes time to clean up those connection points when we're chasing in the metal. So if we can get away with less material, you know, using less material in a ceramic shell, less contact points, you know, that we're adhering and, and cleaning up, that all saves us time and also keeps the integrity of, of our, keeps our focus on the details of our, of our patterns and the castings and what we're trying to achieve. You know, with standard investment or sand casting, those materials are so dense and not gas permeable that you typically you need a gate every, you know, you know, three, four, five inches, depending on the, you know, depending on the, the shape of your pattern and whatnot. Um, and then you need a, a whole myriad of vents to allow all those gases to escape. With a ceramic shell, we you know we still need to vent, and if you got some you know crazy little details or finger lens and stuff like that, you definitely want to you know make sure you vent those things. But you can get, by by and large you can get away with considerably less vents and gates, and so that's really one of the you know key things about ceramic shell in its the, its ability to be gas permeable. Those are a handful of the reasons why I like to use ceramic shell. Being able to cast like you know the, the shells themselves being lightweight the quality of the castings, being able to cast thinner, 
you know, these, these reasons are, are great reasons to, to utilize ceramic shell. Also, when it comes time to burn out, an extra bonus is that because our molds are smaller, depending on the size of our patterns, of course, but you know, inherently our molds are, are, are gonna be smaller, our kilns can be smaller as well. You don't need, you know, if you're casting, again, if you're starting off with a football, but even if you're casting something a little bit, you know, larger than that, you know, and suddenly, you know, it makes your mold exponentially bigger, then that's the size of your kiln as well. And so you can actually get away with, depending on what facilities you have, as far as your, you know, your, your kilns go, you can actually get away with casting a little bit bigger and increasing your pattern size uh, with your existing equipment if you've started off with using gloss wax with standard investment or a low melt you know, sand situation um, and some other types of molds. So that's some you know, basics of what ceramic shell um, and specifically fused silica, the perks of it are and why we're utilizing it for, for, our, you know, for our purposes. In the next video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk more specifically about the components themselves and in the direction of how we're going to utilize them and combine them for our ceramic shell slurry. And so, as always, if you're digging the videos, you know, hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Continue to add comments down below. Um, I'm, I'm really interested in, you know, what questions you have, what struggles you might be having in your studios and or in your foundry practices when it comes to ceramic shell, so I can incorporate uh, those issues into future videos. And with that said, until the next video, be creative and be safe.